Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Sunday evening to you all. Hope you guys are feeling well out there, having yourselves a fantastic night, and have had yourselves a great weekend out there. Um, hopefully you folks have a Monday off. I know I do, but if you don't, I hope your weekend went very well. And uh, we got some things to talk about this evening. Uh, one is going to be a big storm system that's going to hit parts of the country, uh, bring some more severe weather, uh, a winter storm for portions of the country. And this will happen probably midway through the week. Really, probably the biggest day for this event will probably be more so Wednesday. And there will be severe weather going on with winter weather going on at the same time, but just in different geographical locations, obviously. So we'll talk on that. Uh, at the very beginning of the video, we'll talk on what's kind of going on uh, around the Boston area, southern New England with this coastal low that's uh, putting in some waves of heavier frozen precipitation like snow. Certain areas are seeing some sleet, rain, snow mix. Definitely want to know what you folks like in uh, southeast Massachusetts Sea, uh, Maine, and those areas up there. I would love to see how the storm ends up verifying from what the National Weather Service is saying compared to what some of these models were showing, which was some heavy snowfall accumulations. I would love to see who wins out right here just to, uh, j just to kind of see. I'm very interested. Um, but uh, we'll talk about that. And then at the very end of the video, we'll discuss a little bit about this pattern change. You know, I've had a couple comments. What about the pattern change? And uh, I noticed in the beginning of my video this morning, I mentioned I was going to talk about it, but actually never did. And I was actually starting a sentence that I never completed. So for you folks who were wanting to hear about the pattern change this morning, I apologize. I actually never intended to talk about it. and was going to do so tonight, which we will do and we will discuss. And a lot of people are wondering, is it going to be cold in my backyard? I'm wondering the same thing, but we have some confidence on at least what's going to happen at first. So we'll briefly mention that in this video. So if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. Ever consider joining the channel? It goes a long way, especially in slower times. And I'll be honest, it's pretty slow right now. Relatively speaking, you compared this time of the year to um, this time of the year last year in 2022, we were just getting started with an extremely active pattern to finish off the rest of February. I'm sorry, January. So it's a lot different this uh, January, which is fine. Uh, but I uh, appreciate the support of people who have joined my channel. I think I got 20, 21 members, and I really appreciate you folks who uh, support me monthly and just everybody who views. I really appreciate it. If you folks got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, put those in the comments below so I can pray over it and so others can do so too. So let's talk about what's going on right now. Right now you have a winter weather advisory. There was no upgrade to warnings or anything like that, but you do have winter storm warnings in all the eastern counties of Maine. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, you got freeze warnings down here in southeast Georgia and areas of northern and north central Florida. And then you got winter storm watches already up ahead of this system that's going to happen in probably the next two or three days. So they already pretty much have high confidence that we're going to have probably some kind of winter storm in these areas of uh, Kansas, Nebraska, and northeast Colorado. Winter weather advisory is ongoing for a little bit of frozen precipitation overnight into tomorrow. And there, there could be a cold core severe weather setup. I'll talk about that also a little bit in this video for you folks in extreme eastern Iowa maybe even southwestern Wisconsin and northwestern Illinois. you got to watch out for about a one to three hour period tomorrow for some cold core supercells. Cold core meaning there's a it's cold outside, basically. It's in the 50s. And uh, certainly when you walk out, you wouldn't think there's going to be severe weather. But we'll talk about that here in a second. But um, let's discuss, and we'll go on and switch to this panel. But let's take a look at the radar right now out of Boston. We have waves um, of snow that kind of is not working very far west, but just enough west to hit Boston. We had a pretty heavy band that moved through, I think, earlier this afternoon that immediately whitened everything. I saw it on Twitter. There's another band moving into Boston right now. I would love to know what your reports of snowfall in these areas right here. Uh, looks like some of the snow... I know they've been reporting snow in the far eastern tip of um, Long Island all day today. I just don't think you've had enough heavier enough snow to really pick up any substantial accumulations, if any. Uh, but waves of heavier moisture continues to move in. And we'll have to see if we can get any consistent moderate to heavy snow in this area. You know, the sun's done went down and starting to cool off a little bit. But please let me know what you're seeing and, um, and, and just this entire area right here. I would love to know. And then we go up to Maine. And let me see if I can pull out the radar for Maine. Uh, look at Portland here. You're reporting more so of freezing rain and sleet, even though you see blue here as snow. Uh, some areas are seeing snow, especially the further in the inland you work, but a lot of areas, a lot of sleet and freezing rain in these areas. 
in the down east areas of Maine. So be careful. Uh, really a big time ice storm. It's going to set up really tomorrow across these areas of Maine. So uh, please be careful in these regions. We'll give you an update on that this morning. So about the severe weather event tomorrow, I'll briefly discuss it. There is just a general risk of thunderstorms, actually. There was a marginal risk up for, t for tomorrow uh, and yesterday's, well, in this morning's update. There was a marginal risk up, but they dropped it just to a general risk of storms. But I want to tell you, please be aware of any kind of supercells that get going in far eastern Iowa. Some dynamics are there for a very, very quick window a very small window for some severe weather in areas of Iowa tomorrow, especially extreme and really mainly extreme eastern Iowa, where dew points will get into the 50s very briefly ahead of what we call like a triple point, where basically your best kinematics, your thermodynamics kind of meet very briefly and where a surface flow will be riding across this area. So we'll look at the HRRR model up in this area. And by the way, we will see a little winter weather in South Dakota, very small section of North Dakota, and then maybe in areas of Minnesota. Uh, throughout the morning, tomorrow morning, there'll be an area of light to moderate snow in these sections. That's why you have a winter weather advisor. Here comes the surface low. It actually swings through areas of northwest Iowa. And as it does so, we're getting into the afternoon hours, probably about two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon. There'll be a window. You see these little cells right here, the dark reds? These are the cells you watch. All and there might be two, three, four, five of them. Not sure, but they will form, briefly intensify, and then probably weaken and diminish as they get into an uh, kind of a an atmosphere that doesn't support severe storms. But I mean, look here, they form really quick. One, two, three, and maybe four. So about a one, about a two to four hour period where there'll be some nasty storms you need to watch out for in these areas. It's very uncommon for the middle of January, but here we are. And I'll talk about why these low pressures are just plowing right over the entire central U.S. here in a second. There's a reason they are doing that. And while we're not getting any kind of coastal lows or anything like that, like we typically see this time of the year that brings areas like mid-Atlantic and the northeast some chances for winter weather, it's not the case. So this will fly through. And this will potentially bring some heavier snow in areas of uh, central to northern Minnesota. I think for Minneapolis, I think this will more so be – uh, probably just um, mainly rain with some back-end snow, not a big winter weather event for you folks. So let's talk about this system that's going to be arriving here in the next 48 to uh, about 48 hours, about two or three days. So we'll start this off. This is about midday Tuesday. Here's the slow pressure that you watch. It fires off the Rockies, and as it does, um, we're getting into the middle of the night, Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Uh, this is probably just after midnight in areas of eastern Colorado and mainly northeast Colorado, an area of heavy snow develops. I think Denver will get snow too from this. This will be um, a heavy snowfall event for you folks. Not sure exactly how much you guys are going to get. It's always tricky in Denver. Very, very tricky. I feel, guy, I feel bad for folks who predict snow in uh, Denver because it always seems like it's higher or substantially lower than forecasted. We'll have to see, but we'll zone in on snowfall accumulations for this area here in a second. But if we keep this going here, um, heavier snow showing up in areas of Colorado. Then we're getting into Wednesday morning at this point. Heavy snow begins to overspread into areas of Nebraska, all of southern Nebraska and western Nebraska, picking up snow in extreme areas of northern Kansas, also seeing some snow, a little bit of ice potentially here also for areas of northern Kansas. So uh, as this continues, we'll see what happens as we're getting into Wednesday afternoon. All-out snowstorm for a good chunk of Nebraska, especially the central areas of Nebraska. And I think an area of heavy snow will start to move into Omaha. This could be a substantial snowstorm for you folks. I am not. I don't know if you're going to get a, a foot of snow in Omaha, but we'll have to definitely watch. At the same time, there will be a severe weather episode ongoing down here. We're not sure of the exact storm mode. We get into these short range model guidance really tomorrow and then into the next day. And we'll start to really see how this storm mode is going to be. As of now, just a slight risk. We'll talk about that here in a second. But this continues. <clears throat> and uh, really, this is the evolution of the storm. Heavy snow starts to move into Iowa in the middle of the night. Uh, basically, in the middle of the night, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, you got uh, just... Uh, a ton of snow falling in Iowa. Des Moines could be a big winter storm for you guys. It looks like ball, not Boston. It looks like Chicago. You got to be just north of Chicago to see appreciable snowfall. This looks like it's going to be right on the, 
right on the fringe of rain and snow for you guys. I do think y'all get a little bit of snow from this, but as far as heavy accumulations, you got to go up to Milwaukee, basically between Chicago and Green Bay, as we're getting into this coming Thursday morning, January 19th. And I think that this could be a heavy snowfall event for southern Wisconsin and far northern areas of um of uh, Illinois. It looks like most of the heaviest snow is going to say south of Minnesota, but as this continues, this could be a substantial snowstorm uh, for also areas of uh, Michigan. But southern Michigan, probably more so rain, but of course we'll fine-tune this as we get closer. Uh, the European, it's pretty much an agreement at this point. Uh, flies this through. We're getting into Wednesday morning snowing heavily in areas of northeast Colorado. Uh, probably some heavy wet snow falling, falling in northwest uh, Kansas. Uh, all the western Nebraska heavy snow. Kind of the same deal. Of course, it's, it's it's tweaking a little bit. It's not exactly the same. Um, but I would I would argue that the Euro is a little bit warmer. Uh, brings that rain snow line a little bit further north of Chicago. Uh, but still a lot of heavy snow falling for those states I just mentioned in the middle of the night, Wednesday night to Thursday morning. Then we're getting into Thursday morning. Brings more moderate snow into Minneapolis. So this will be a more substantial winter storm for you guys, but I wouldn't use the word substantial for that, but um, we'll certainly watch. But uh, this could definitely be bring a lot of heavy snow potentially for the Great Lakes region up here, and this is just cutting. It's going to bring all rain again for the northeast. We'll, we'll zone in on the northeast um, probably in tomorrow night's video, but just kind of telling you kind of in general that this is going to be a winter storm. We'll talk about snowfall accumulations here in a second. Let's zone in on the severe weather event. So, for Wednesday, day four, you have a 15% risk of severe weather occurring. That is a, at least of a 15% risk, risk of severe weather occurring within 25 miles in any given location. Think of this. This is a day. This is a slight two. A slight two. This is a, um, a level two out of five on the severe weather um, index over here. So right now, just a slight risk, but it was also just a slight risk, 48 hours, I believe, before the awful tornado outbreak that happened in Alabama on portions of Georgia and Mississippi a few days ago. So we have to see if this trends much higher here in the next two to three days, and it could. So do not let your guard down, guys, because the, these events have just been happening every couple weeks, and we never know if they're going to trend worse until they do. So uh, just if you're in this yellow area down here, even areas to the east, Please note that there's going to be another severe weather event probably Wednesday. Timing is still up in the air, but if you're in Louisiana, Jackson, Mississippi, far eastern areas of Texas, we're going to do this again. Unfortunately, probably Wednesday. And really, we can look at the dynamics all day with this, but in, in a nutshell, what's really driving this is moisture return. And when you, when you get any kind of severe weather event in January, that's the first thing you look at. And really, you get that when you have low pressures that plow right over the uh, central U.S. and then ride, whether they're riding into the Ohio Valley or just straight up into central Canada or into the Great Lakes region, when they cut like this, um, south of the low pressure, they bring southerly winds and they bring a lot of low-level moisture out the Gulf of Mexico into the Gulf states. And this will be the case. There already will be a lot of moisture riding into this area a couple days prior. But if we keep this going, these are dew points, guys. These are not temperatures. Um, and when you get dew points in the 60s, really especially, that's when you start to get enough low-level moisture that supports severe weather. And we, we call this a moist sector. And as we're getting into about the midday time frame, Wednesday into the afternoon hours, we have dew points riding well into the mid to upper 60s, and there'll probably be a 70-degree dew point reading or two. This is a moving air mass as a trough continues to approach. But there is going to be some kind of evolution. The storm mode, we're not sure. But there's going to be enough low-level moisture. We don't know about the cape. I can sit here and I can flip through all these panels all day. But at the end of the day, guys, um, just know that there is going to be a moist sector. There's going to be moist air. And I think thermos, I mean, if you look at this, you look at the GFS, I mean, temperatures rise to close to 80 degrees. So I would argue that the thermos are, are not that bad. You know, you look in the discussion from the Storm Prediction Center, they say that... Um, they're on the weaker side, but, I, you know, this is just one model run of the GFS also. But it shows temperatures kind of right getting into the 70s, and that's that's what we call thermodynamics, the surface temperatures. But they're saying 
and the upper levels of the atmosphere, they're much different, which might tamper the severe weather threat. We hope it does. But we'll start looking at things like CAPE, uh, the, the storm fuel, the storm energy, the fuel of these storms. We'll start looking at that until tomorrow. I don't think there's much point to look at it right now. But when we get into these short-range model guidance like the NAM, the HRRR model, we're going to really start to see how this unfolds. So just know Louisiana surrounding sections of each state. Even watch out southern Arkansas. Looks like a severe weather event's going to be on the way. How significant it's going to be, we're just not quite sure, guys. So let's talk about how much snow could fall. This is the blend of all models right now. We'll take the entire duration of this event from Colorado all the way to the Great Lakes region and every state in between. The blend of all models, like I said, blends all the models, pretty much what it, what it does here, and uh, shows a swath of snow from uh, Colorado all the way to northern Michigan. And uh, several inches can fall in this swath. You know, there'll be areas, this will be the epicenter of the worst snow, or well, the heaviest snow, is what I'll say, uh, where there'll be widespread areas that see maybe six to as much as 12 inches of snow in areas of southern Nebraska and northeast sections of uh, Kansas. I'm sorry, northwest sections of Kansas. And Omaha, you could get, I think, over a half a foot of snow. In fact, I think you will from this. This will be a corridor of heavy snow. It's not going to be a long lasting winter storm. But at the same time, it's going to dump some pretty heavy snow in a relatively quick amount of time. So we'll look at the National Weather Service forecast and zone in on this area. It shows, you know, Denver may be picking six to eight inches of snow um, and picking up six to eight inches of snow in this event. And then look at eastern Colorado, um, you know, maybe upwards of 10 inches of snow. You move into Kansas. And, um, oh, let's see, we, we lost our frame here. Kansas, the latest forecast from the National Weather Service, and it's probably still snowing in this frame. This is just between now and Wednesday evening. You already have, you know, maybe 8 to 10 inches of snow on the ground. This also includes areas of far southwest Nebraska. I don't pretend to know every little community and town in southwest Nebraska, but um, hopefully I got some uh, viewers from out in that area. That, that's always awesome when, you know, I know I cover... I know a lot of people in the Southeast view my channel in the Eastern U.S., but it's always cool when I have people who comment, uh, who watch from way out here in Nebraska and Kansas. Uh, but anyways, I think if you live in this area where Colorado, the Kansas, and Nebraska state line meet, I think that'll be the epicenter for the heaviest snow. But this is as far out as the National Weather Service model goes, so uh, we can't really go out any further than this. But pretty impactful storm system coming. It's just going to impact, impact the middle of the country in the south. Um, but after we get past this event, guys, um, this is the event we just talked about. We move past this. We're getting into Friday. If you're confused about the time frame, FRI 20 means Friday, the 20th of January. Or you can look over here, too. Don't focus too much on the actual time of the day, but just the date, really. It gets kind of quiet there for a couple days, but not for long. And another low pressure develops off the GFS, and it pops off right here. Here comes the L. But this is moving a little bit further southeast, low pressure cutting across the Mid-South, and this looks like an apse cutter, which means it's a low pressure that cuts across the southern Appalachian Mountains and then just the entire spine, but then it might transfer up here. This could bring more snow to the north central U.S. We'll certainly watch out for that. And uh, that's up, you know, about a week out, so we don't know the details on that. For example, the GFS shows mainly rain for the I-95 corridor and just mountain snow for the northeast, but if I'm about to show you the Euro. The Euro is much different. The Euro shows uh, a substantial winter storm for areas further south. We get past that, and then we watch another system. Now, this is getting 10 days out, but it just shows you we're getting system after system that's cutting across the middle of the country. We're not getting any kind of low pressure. So, you know, dip, dipping into the, the Gulf the Gulf or off the coast of the eastern U.S., that's not the case here, and there's a reason for that. We look at the European, same kind of deal. We just talked about that system. Here comes our next system this weekend. We're getting into Sunday morning. This brings snow pretty far south. As we're getting about seven days out, this has a low pressure with enough cold air about, around um, for more snow a little bit further south. This shows snow into western Kentucky, western Tennessee. Not saying that's going to happen, but it's a much different scenario. You know, a seven and eight, seven to eight days out, the GFS and the European totally disagree with one another. This would bring a winter, a winter event for areas of West Virginia. Um, and then look at the low pressure popping off right off the coastline of uh, Long Island, things like that. And this would bring a substantial winter event for New England, the I-95 corridor potentially, and then for Boston as we're getting into about eight days out, so around next Sunday into Monday. 
So that'll be the next system that we watch after the one that m most of the video was just about. We need to watch this, and then here comes another one. And I can tell you, in the long range, the European is much colder than the GFS. Now, briefly, we'll talk about this, and I gotta head out and pick up my girls from girls choir from uh, kids choir. Um, the reason we're having systems cut like this, and here it goes. Here's the European. It's because we have a tall ridge over the eastern U.S. So, really, in general, just this favors a storm track that cuts right across the middle of the country. Here comes another system right here dropping down into the west. And uh, this favors a storm track a little bit further southeast, though, as troughing sets up and you have a dip in the jet stream very briefly that moves over the central to eastern U.S. So this would probably put the storm track somewhere like this right here at the base of this trough. And that's why the European ensemble, which is what this is, shows more of a wintry scenario a little bit further south for that second system I just talked about. Pushes this trough very briefly uh, south creates a favorable scenario for winter weather across the east maybe as we're getting into next weekend but notice you know shows an amplified trough right here storm track favorable but then look what happens shows looks like a cross polar flow and this is why i'm talking about that pattern change yes there is a pattern change but we're not exactly sure who's going to get the core of the coldest air but for now it's looking like it's going to drop right into the central u.s and then eventually into the western u.s but we'll stop this we'll freeze it here 10 days out this is dropping a pretty a pretty intense shot of cold air right down the throat of the lower 48 all the way down to texas i'm not saying we're going to have a february 2021 or anything but this is a pretty intense shot of cold air showing up on the ensembles and then eventually the southeast ridge flexes and it looks like a big time storm track tracks over this and i think as we get into the last part of january i think we're going to have some very very active storm systems but we still don't know we look at the gfs ensembles it's a little bit different it's a much more warmer here comes that signal for that storm as we're getting um, um, the same signal for that storm, that second storm for this coming weekend. Here it comes. It's a warmer. It doesn't dip this trough far enough east and just drops a pretty intense. At this point, we don't know how cold this air mass is, but it it's beginning to open up the hounds of winter all the way from the polar areas. So this is bringing a cross polar flow into the middle of the country. Man, this looks like a cold look. So we need to watch this. I think someone is going to get dumped with some pretty intense cold in about seven to 10 days, but where it dumps, we're not sure, but the models have trended more so at dumping further west into the central and eastern U.S. I'm central and western U.S., which could continue to keep that trap, that active storm track like, like this right here as troughing sets up and digs right into here. So that doesn't favor southeast snow or east coast snow, but this is an evolving situation, okay? Just remember that. We're not quite sure on some things, and just stick with me with this, and we'll definitely try to figure out. That's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all, and y'all have a great night.